So in the last video, we did something really bizarre. Uh, we went from counting apples in three-dimensional space to counting states in K space. And so we said that these states were spaced a certain distance, and I say that with my fingers doing quotation marks, uh, a distance of pi over L from each other. And so each of the states has a volume of pi over L cubed. And so we said that the total number of states in a spherical shell, so if, I'm just going to redraw that real quick, in a spherical shell is equal to uh, one eighth. So the, the eighth is just for the eighth of the octant that we're interested in because n's are only positive, times four pi r squared And when I say r, I of course mean k, uh, 4 pi k squared, uh, delta k, divided by pi over l cubed. And so k is just the distance from the origin to the center, and delta k is the thickness of this spherical shell. And I've drawn it pretty near the center here, but in reality, we're going to have billions or really like 10 to the 20 plus states so this justification of encompassing uh, things inside a spherical shell, you might say, well, some states will get missed. Yeah, but there's going to be a lot of them. So at any appreciable distance from the center, uh, this is going to be approximately true. So if we just uh, factor out the pi over L or ex expand it, it's just 1 over 8th, 4 pi k squared delta k divided by pi cubed times L cubed. And remember, we said we wanted the total number of states per volume, right? Uh, we wanted the total number of states per volume in our semiconductor, the density of states. And so we just divide by L cubed, the total volume of our semiconductor, and we just cancel it. So the density of states is just this, 4 pi k squared delta k. And uh, let's also cancel out one of the pi's. So this becomes pi squared. So 4 pi or 4 k squared uh, delta k divided by pi squared. And so this is the density of states in a certain volume in k space. Or, uh, and this is why I chose the spherical shell. If I take the limit as delta k approaches 0, uh, then I'll get dk, or the density of states, g as a function of k is just 1 8th times 4 k squared dk divided by pi squared. Now, why did I say I want dk instead of delta k? Well, remember, we want to do ultimately an integral that looks like this, uh, the integral of a probability function as a function of energy times the density of states as a function of energy times dE. Now, normally, we just have the density, a density function that we want to integrate all by itself, and then we plug it into this integral. But we could take this whole thing and get an expression for this entire thing instead of just an expression for the density of states g of e. So we can include dE in any answer that we come up with for the density of states, or right now we have a dK. Um, so this is, this is totally fine. Uh, this is this is why I chose a spherical shell, because we're going to be doing an integration, and we want delta k or dk now uh, to be very, very small. So this is sort of a, a mathematical hack, uh, if you will, that I've done to allow us to get something integrable out of this. Well, so now the only thing left is to take this density of states as a function of k and turn it into a function of energy, because we're not really interested in k. k is sort of, uh, what, what even is k? Well, it's related to momentum, but it's not that important at this, at this point. So we want energy instead. And we know from our last video that from quantum mechanics, we just know that k is equal to the square root of 2m e divided by h bar squared, or dk uh, dE is just, well, it's the derivative with respect to the square root of e, or 1 half times the square root of 
2m over h bar squared e. Or if we solve for dk, uh, just multiply both sides by de, uh, 1 half squared of 2m divided by h bar squared uh, 1 over e times de. And so we, we can plug in this value for k into our equation, this value for dk, and we will end up with, let's, let's see what happens. Let's see if I did everything correctly. Uh, four times k squared, which is 2me over h bar squared times dk, which is 1 half uh, 2m over h bar squared 1 over e. Uh, all divided by 8 times pi squared, all times de. Uh, now, if we factor this, do all the algebra, we'll get that g of e times de is equal to 2 pi uh, times 2m to the 3 halves over h cubed, and that's not h bar anymore, that's h cubed. Uh, h bar is just h over 2 pi, makes things a lot more convenient sometimes, uh, times the square root of e, all times de. And is this answer correct? Uh, no, this answer is actually wrong. So the reason that it's wrong is that each state, each quantum state, uh, can, actually can actually be occupied by two electrons. So a spin up electron and a spin down electron. So we need to multiply this result by two. And we will get the correct result, which is that g of e times de is just four pi times two m to the three halves square root of e de divided by h cubed. And m is the mass of the electron. h is Planck's constant, e is the energy of the electron. And that's our answer. So we figured out what the density of states was. Uh, and we used rather bizarre mathematical trickery and counted things in k space, uh, which still weirds me out even to this day. It took me quite a long time to figure out just how to explain it. But we found an expression for g of e, or the density of states, of electrons uh, as a function of energy. And that's exactly what we wanted. So this result is sort of halfway to the ultimate goal of figuring out, OK, how many charge carriers are actually in my semiconductor? So in the next video, we're going to talk about the probability distribution. So how do we actually carry out the complete integral? How do we carry out the probability times the density, dE? And this is uh, known as the Fermi-Dirac integral, or it'll end up being the, being the Fermi-Dirac integral. So thanks, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.